Hi, it is the end of February, and so that means I am here with a February wrap-up of books I read this month. I read four books. I'm mostly going to talk about three of them. Um, the first book I read was The Perfect Letter by Chris Harrison. I am not going to go in depth with that, or I'm not really going to talk about that at all right now. I read it with plans to do a whole like separate video just for it with my friend Morgan, Pisces Paperbacks. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm not going to really talk about it here. Um, my computer just stopped making buzzing. Um, well, let's just Hello, it is the end of February, and that means I am here with a February wrap-up of books I read this month. I read four books this month. I'm going to talk about three of them, really. The first book I read, which is the one I'm not going to talk about, is The Perfect Letter by Chris Harrison. <laughs> if you know me <laughs> or uh, see other videos on this channel, you know that I am a big Bachelor fan, so why not read Chris Harrison's romance novel. Um, I actually plan to do a whole video just about it with Morgan, my friend. She has a channel, Pisces Paperbacks. And yeah, so we'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, Chris Harrison is currently, it's weird because like he's still, you're still watching The Bachelor and he's still on the show, but he is stepping down um, for an unknown period of time because of yeah, like being racist, which isn't new, but it's the first time there's consequences. So that's that. And let's let's get let's talk about the books. Um because that's what we're here for. The first one we're gonna talk about is The Whisper Man by Alex North. I read The Shadows in November, which is Alex North's second novel but I actually bought them both at the same time because they sounded really good. I decided to read The Shadows first because in the reviews a lot of people said The Whisper Man was better so I wanted to you know go on an uphill trajectory so I saved this one and I'm glad actually that I waited a while to read it. Uh, just to like start off I will say I love <laughs> this book. I really enjoyed the experience of reading it. Um, this one definitely I don't I don't know, it's not really like horror, I guess, but it is like a mystery, crime, thriller um, that has like some supernatural elements or like themes and it is really scary. Um, I'm not someone, I don't, I don't watch a lot of horror movies, I don't read a lot of horror fiction or that sort of stuff, um, but I don't tend to get very scared by it. Um, the last time I was freaked out watching something was watching It Follows, uh, which I didn't even know I was scared while I was watching it, but afterwards I definitely like had that like creeped out feeling. And that was four years ago and this scared me way more than that. I was so stressed out reading it, I had to like stop and put it down and cause I was like scared. I was like, oh my god, oh my god. I was like skipping ahead on pages and then having to like stop myself and go back and read what actually happened um really intense very good and I would definitely recommend it I do agree that it's a hair better than the, the shadows um yeah it's it's better but um they're both really good I would recommend them both uh, the Shadows plays more, I think, with the supernatural elements than this one. Uh, one thing I will say, though, about the two is I wouldn't recommend reading them in a row, which was my original plan, but I'm glad I didn't because there are some really similar elements between the two that I think if I had read them back to back, I would have kind of been like, okay, <laughs> sure. Um, I know a lot of authors, like, reuse things in multiple novels. And I'm not against that. In this case, it didn't really bother me, especially because I wasn't reading them back to back. But <laughs> uh, I did make kind of like a little list of things that are similar. And if you like these things, then these are definitely great books for you. So um, it's not bad, it's just things that are the same. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying they're bad things, but they both have like, 
I think both protagonists are in their 30s, they're both men, and they're both really interested in writing. Uh, it, I'm guessing this is some sort of autobiographical <laughs> trait that the books have. Our protagonist is, is dealing with some sort of loss or grieving something. They confront the past in some way. Uh, the book as a whole, um, one of the things that they do is they switch between perspectives and in both books they switch between like our main protagonist and then investigators on the case. Both books focus on a crime from the past that is like haunting the community in some way. There is a mytho mythology or folklore built up around this crime in the community specifically but also maybe in general and that this folklore um may or may not combine with like supernatural entities and or there's a play on like blurring the lines between the supernatural and like reality in the books which is part of the like thriller horror element for sure so <laughs> both these books do all those things um and i'm glad i read them separately <laughs> instead of back to back um but yes really 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 enjoyed this book highly recommend and we're gonna go from this into another um two books that i really really enjoyed as well and i'm gonna talk about them in one because like they are a duology they're already super super popular they're, like nothing new but i read uh six of crows and crooked kingdom so yeah like i said these are already extremely popular books and a lot of like everyone who like reads books or like reads fantasy and like YA knows about these books already. I didn't see anything about them until I started reading again and then they kind of popped up as being like a popular option. <laughs> Obviously they're being adapted by Netflix. If you can see the sticker on there. Um so <laughs> that's a thing. The series is actually coming out in April. So I'm happy about that because I'm excited to see it. And like I said, <laughs> I really really enjoyed these books um the whisper man i would say is a five star read from me and so are both of these i actually thought these were going to be four star for a while while i was reading these especially i finished the first one i was like i don't know why but this is a four star book i think um i honestly i couldn't tell you anything that i didn't like about these books um if i had to critique something i would say that crooked kingdom got like a little exhausting but also like i can see how it serves a purpose so i can't even be like oh that should be cut down because i see the purpose it serves but it was a little tiring in the middle um that's like the only critique i could come up with at all um but for some reason, while I was reading these, I, like, didn't feel particularly emotionally attached to them. I didn't, like, they it just wasn't coming out in the emotions for me. And typically, I'm, like, pretty emotional <laughs> when I'm reading and stuff. I did finish Six of Crows. Basically, immediately started reading Crooked Kingdom. I was like, oh, like, I really like them, but I don't, like, love them. Um, and I finished Crooked Kingdom, and I was like, yeah, like, I don't know why. I should love this book. I felt like I should love these books, but I just, like, it wasn't, I didn't feel it in the feels, but I was, like, sitting here, I read it, and I was, like, oh, I'm gonna listen to this one podcast, like, oh, like, I'll draw a crow, and then, like, the next morning, I was, like, hmm, I bet there's a lot of, like, fan fiction for these books. The last thing I have read fan fiction for is Twilight. Back in high school, like, way, way back, that's how many years that and like i'm just like oh well let me just look it up i don't you know i'm like i don't know if i like love this book but like let me just like mm, look up the fan fiction <laughs> like hello i'm the telltale sign and there is a fan fiction out there i just want to say i just want to shout out it's called dirty paws and it's about kaz adopting a stray cat he finds and i really really want to read it <laughs> it was the only one that i like really really wanted to read and it's like messed up. It's like, um, there's like a bunch of like code, like CSS, uh, all in there. So if like, 
that could be fixed. Um, I would really like to read this fan fiction, please, and thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, it was more of like a slow burn <laughs> uh, excitement for me, and I say that when like I literally finished this like three, four days ago. <laughs> And I'm already like, I love this book, but I just didn't, I didn't know that I felt it at first. But I definitely, I like want to reread them. I, the characters are really, really good. The plotting is really good. The world building is really good. These books, the twists in them are immaculate. There are so many good twists. I didn't really guess any of the twists. At some points I was like, oh, we're building up to a twist. There was a ton that took me entirely by surprise. I did not know we're coming. The plot kept me guessing. It kept me on my toes. Um, it was so good. And the characters are really um, great. Hmm. Okay, so... I think, like, it's pretty obvious, like, our two, like, lead leads are Kaz and Inej. And I feel a little torn because... On first glance, like, Kaz is my favorite character, right? Um, it's an obvious, real, real obvious pick for me. Uh, Kaz has major Thomas Shelby vibes, and I love Thomas Shelby. <laughs> oh my god, um, I okay, Peaky Blinders is my favorite TV show. <laughs> and, um, this is, like, fantasy YA Peaky Blinders. Okay, um, right, Kaz is the obvious <laughs> favorite for me, considering Tommy is my favorite on Peaky Blinders. It's like my, my go-to, my, my weakness, my very popular, ever, many people have a sort of weakness, like, oh, he's the bad boy with the dark hair who's really smart and misunderstood, oh my god, <laughs> who would have thought, but... After sitting on it, I'm like, maybe Inej is my favorite, actually. Food for thought. She's kind of like the Polly. I mean, obviously very different as far as, like, relationship to each other, but she's more the heart of the group, and he's more of, like, the brains, much like Polly's the heart of the family, and Tommy is the brains. Boom, boom. And then they work together, but in different ways. <laughs> and... It's really good. So yeah, I think Inej might actually be my favorite sitting on it, but I'll have to reread to like find out, right? Yes, cool. Um, I bought these a while ago and they were on the top of my list and for some reason, I just kept putting them off. No, I kind of know why. They're obviously like a little bit bigger, um, a little bit more to dig into, which is, I had been excited for that in early December, but th by the time I got them for Christmas, I was kind of like, I don't know. I was... So, uh, I, I don't know the words, but I'm glad I finally read them two months later. <laughs> I'm very happy about this. I bought um, stickers on Etsy already. <laughs> How did I get, I swear, I'm, I'm just like kicking past me. I'm like, I cannot believe past me was like, mm, I feel like I should like it more, but I just like don't. So this is like a four star book for me. Oh my God, <laughs> past me, who were you? Who is she? I don't recognize her. And now I love them. Um, we'll sit on it a little bit more, but like I might even like have the gall to say that this these two like might be like my new favorite books i haven't had a favorite a new favorite book since um me talk pretty one day by david sedaris which i decided was my favorite in like junior year high school i think that's when that became my new favorite book that i would say um and i really really like that book and i read it a lot at the time but i haven't read it in a long time in a while i should read it again it's really good um, but that's a very different book from these, and I feel so excited about these that I think I just, I think I want them to be my new favorite books I read this month. Um, great month. Great month. 
five stars all around. Well, except the perfect letter, but we're not talking about that right now. So I'll just leave this there. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this, please consider giving a like or watching, um, like, I don't know, another video. And also, like, if you just are in the mood, like, could you, like, please go and like my Winx review? Uh, <laughs> the like to dislike ratio on that is, like, really killing me right now a little bit. So, um, that would be super cool if you could do that. Alright, so have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye.